I'll never forget this guy telling me. He said, kid, if you want to be successful, you've got to leave Wyoming. You'll never make money in Wyoming, he told me. And I was like, you know what? I don't need money to be rich. I need to be happy. I need to be doing what I love. If I can do that and stay in Wyoming, then I consider myself rich. In 2002, I was hired by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department to be a wildlife biologist in Wheatland. And, and since college, I've been very blessed to be in Wheatland, right where I grew up. Hey, what's Hi. going on? Uh, my district runs from the, the Nebraska border uh, past the Laramie Range, so it's, it's very diverse. I manage a lot of species within that district, but one species I'm truly blessed to, to work with is, is bighorn sheep. You know, I've always been drawn to bighorn sheep. I had a, a license back in 1994. I was an ignorant college kid, I had no idea how to hunt bighorn sheep. Watched an outfitter shoot two sheep around me, and, <laughs> and one night he had me come down to his camp and offered me a, a cold beverage and, and some pretty darn good advice on how to hunt sheep. And I was able to take that advice and harvest a ram up, up in Hunt Area 10. And, and ever since then, I've been fascinated with, with bighorn sheep. Where they live, how they survive, at the same time, how fragile they are to any kind of environmental changes um, just makes them a fascinating creature to me. That's, that's by far the, my favorite animal. But, there's always that but, because how fragile they are, a major concern is their susceptibility to stressors, and particularly respiratory diseases. These different bacteria that these sheep will get, it can have an all-age die-off. In other words, every animal in that herd will die. In order to, to focus and learn as much as we can about these diseases, the department started a bighorn sheep working group. It's been in place for several decades now. We just completed capturing sheep down here in southeast Wyoming to collect those biological samples to help us learn more about the pathogens that, that cause respiratory diseases. Uh, we also put on GPS radio collars and we'll, we'll follow that movement for about three years. It's collecting three locations a day and so there'll, there'll be a lot of data points that we can analyze to learn more about uh, their actual movements, where they're having their lambs, where they, they prefer to winter, and then also any time we have a mortality, we get a signal and we can hopefully get on that fast enough to determine what that mortality was. Bighorn sheep, for the most part, have been on decline since the 90s, so we, we need to make sure we do everything we can to improve uh, those populations. Bighorn sheep aren't the only animal that we need to study. Wildlife in Wyoming has always been a huge part of me and especially the state. What gets me up every morning, uh, I am so blessed to do what I do. I, I get to work with our precious resource. If I do my job right, we will have wildlife for my grandkids, great grandkids. And, and that's a lot of uh, responsibility. I take that very seriously and I'll do everything I can to make sure that that happens. And, and, at the end of the day, if I say I did some, one, one good thing for wildlife, boy, I, I've got a big smile on my face. Without this job and without this resource, I know I wouldn't be enjoying life as much as I am today. Again, to me, success is waking up and feeling good about what you're doing. And it's not money that does that. It's seeing those wild animals in those wild places, going in, in remote areas and, and knowing that very few people have been in some of those places. And to me, that is, that is huge. That's success.